Hey everybody, my name is Kevin. I'm with Bohemian Interactive Simulations. Today we're going to talk about using VBS4 to create scenarios for vehicle crew training. In this case, I'm in the editor, uh, of which I've described kind of a high-level overview of all the features and functionality of it, so we're going to keep this kind of brief. Uh, we're going to first place our training vehicles. To do that, we're either going to click on the vehicle uh, text or press F4, and we're going to determine where we want to place our vehicle by double-clicking where we want it. Uh, in this case, this is a, a menu that allows us to choose all the content to add into our scenarios. I'm going to stick with a foxhound uh, because maybe my training audience is uh, British today. Uh, and as described in the editor video, this also is how I can configure specific parameters about the vehicle. So if I want to start it with less fuel or no fuel or a damaged wheel or lower ammunition, this is how I would do it. Um, what is important about this menu is setting it to be playable. Playable denotes that this can be chosen by a trainee when the scenario is hosted in network mode. So let's do that for this vehicle. And let's copy and paste them for a couple other vehicles. Now, uh, let's add an IED to the scenario so that my trainees will have to ensure that they're scanning their surroundings as they're driving. So I just double click where I want it. This allows me to choose what type of IED, what it looks like and what its parameters are. What this allows me to do is facilitate different types of training. So maybe if I'm working with a new group, I can set it so the vehicle does, or the ID does zero damage. Uh, but if I'm working with a grizzled experienced crew, I make it so that the ID does do damage and damage the vehicle. We can also determine how it's uh, detonated. So um, essentially, if I were to set it to be detonated by a cell phone, there's uh, EW systems that can jam that frequency in VBS4 that will prevent the ID from detonating. For right now, I'll just keep it admin only. So once we're happy with that, let's press the preview key. Now we're in the scenario, and this is what the trainee sees. Before we talk too much about what the trainee sees, let's talk about how the controls can be mapped. So if you press the escape key, this is something that the administrator, or yeah, the administrator would do. You go to the settings tab, you can change all of the controls of how VBS4 interprets it. VBS4 natively works with any USB game controller. So if you have a commercial off the shelf uh, device, you can map it here. Uh, what's also important is setting the gearbox mode. So by default, the gearbox mode is uh, off, which just means that when you press forward, the vehicle is forward. But you can also set it to be real so that you have to manually shift each gear and manipulate the vehicle closer to how you would do it in reality. Uh, this is something that depending on the training need, you can turn on, on and off, but it's important to know that VBS4 has that capability. You can also map specific controls for different gears in the advanced menu. Let's go back to the simulation and talk about training mode. So this is what the trainee would see. To manipulate the camera, you can hold down the Alt key and move the mouse to look left and right. Um, I can press the U as in uniform key to interact with different positions. So this is called the interactive vehicles menu. You can see that the top right seat is occupied. It's red and it says HU, which means there's a human in that seat but I can click on different seats to switch different positions. So I've just jumped now from the uh, driver's position to the, I guess, the front left position. I can also go to the back position uh, as a cargo uh, trainee, and I can also open the doors. So there's a lot of different ways to interact with the vehicle. Uh, in this case, I can also press the Z key to pop my hatch if there is one and look around the vehicle. So that's a very high level overview of the training mode. Let's talk about how this can be used for the administrator. So I've pressed M and now I am looking at this scenario from a God's eye view. Let's assume each one of these vehicles is a trainee. We have the capability to move vehicles. Um, also, we have capabilities to visualize information about it. So in this case, you can see each one of these entities is scanning their surroundings. I can tweak these settings by going to view and pressing FOV settings. So I can make it on for all entities, only AI entities, determine how long it'll render out for and how uh, opaque it is. So in this case, you can see that the, the human trainee is covering the front and the back of the uh, vehicle. We also have, you can see it here, a trail that allows me to visualize where the vehicle's going and where it's coming from. So if I give him a waypoint, you'll see that uh, the trail will move based on that. Then finally, there's something called an ink spot, which basically shows how long the vehicle's been stationary for. So you can see right here, this blue circle is getting larger because the vehicle's been stationary for a long period of time. But if the vehicle were to move, uh, the spot would disappear and then start from uh, zero again. So at a glance, as an administrator, I can see how long that vehicle's been uh, stationary for. And then finally, let's go to our IED if I can find it. I'm gonna switch to 2D. And if you right click, 
you can do different things with this ID. So if I want to, I can booby trap it, I can detonate it, and I can daisy chain it to other systems. So let's get a nice look at that in 3D. Right click the ID and then export ID. Again, this is a quick overview of how to use VBS4 to build vehicle crew trainers. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something about this today. If you guys have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Bohemia. Thank you very much.